Welcome to Electro Online. Here we have an example where we have three charges on a straight line and we're trying to find the force on each of the three charges one at a time. In other words, here we're going to find the force on Q1 due to the presence of Q2 and Q3. Here we're going to find the force on Q2 due to the presence of Q1 and Q3. And here we're going to find the force on Q3 as a result of the effect of Q1 and Q2. So to do that, we're first going to draw the vectors representing those forces. So starting with the first here, again, this is just the same example, but we're going to do it three times. In each case, the force on a different charge. So here on the first charge, notice we're going to have a force repulsion because of the effect of Q2, which means we're going to feel a force in this direction. So this would be the force between 1 and 2. And then there'll be a force of attraction between Q1 and Q3 in this direction. So this would be the force between 1 and 3. Over here on Q2, this will feel a force of repulsion due to this presence of this charge will be in this direction. So this will be the force between 2 and 1. And then over here, or 1 and 2, depending, it's the same thing. And then here we feel a force of attraction because of the presence of Q3. So this will be the force between 2 and 3. Draw little arrows on them because these are indeed vectors. So they're both pointing in the same direction. And then for the third charge, notice here that this charge will feel a force of attraction due to this charge. It'll be in this direction. It'll be a small force because they're far apart from one another. So this will be the force between 3 and 1. And then we have the force of attraction between these two, probably a little bit bigger, the force between uh, 3 and 2. Okay, so now we're ready to find the result of that. To do that, we're going to find the magnitude of each of these forces uh, one at a time. But notice, of course, that the force F12 is equal to the force 21, and the force 23 is equal to the force 32, and the force, let's say, uh, 31 is equal to the force 13. So it doesn't matter which order we put the subscripts, the magnitude will always be the same. So let's go ahead and find the magnitude of those three forces. So first we're going to find the force between 1 and 2, which is equal to K times Q1, Q2, divided by the distance between them squared. And again, negative signs don't matter here because we're only finding the magnitude of these forces. So in this case, this will be equal to 9 times 10 to the 9th. Multiply times Q1. I'm going to leave off the units because then things look a little bit cleaner that way. Q1 is 6 microcoulombs, which is 6 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. Q2 is 1.5 microcoulombs. And then the distance between them squared is, uh, is 3 centimeters, so it would be 0 0.03 meters squared. And that will give us a magnitude between those two. 9e to the 9th times 6e to the 6 minus times 1.5e to the 6 minus divided by 0 0.03 squared equals, and we get exactly 90 newtons. Of course, this would be in newtons, of course. All right. So what about the force between, let's see here, we did 1 and 2, now how about between 2 and 3? That would be K, Q2, Q3, divided by the distance between them squared. So it would be 9 times 10 to the 9th. Q2, that would be 1.5 times 10 to the minus 6. And Q3, that's a negative charge, but again, we ignore negative signs. So it would be 2 times 10 to the minus 6. That's newtons, all divided by the distance between those two. The distance between these two is 2 centimeters, so it would be 0 0.02 quantity squared. So let's see what that is equal to. 9e to the 9th times 1.5e to the 6 minus times 2e to the 6 minus divided by 0 0.02 squared equals, and that's 67.5 newtons. All right, now we have the first two. What about the last one? The force between the first and the third charge. So F13 is equal to K Q1 Q3 divided by the distance between them squared. 
That would be 9 times 10 to the 9th times 6 times 10 to the minus 6 and 2 times 10 to the minus 6. Again, we don't care about the negative sign because we're simply finding the magnitude of that force. The distance between them will be 5 centimeters, so it'll be 0.05 quantity squared. So 9e to the 9 times 6e to the 6 minus times 2e to the 6 minus divide by 0 0.05 squared equals and we get 43.2 newtons for the third force. Okay, now we're ready to answer the questions. What is the force on Q1? So the force on Q1 is equal to, and of course it's a vector quantity, so we can see we have a force pulling to the left, F12, so that would be minus F12 in the x direction, plus F13, in the x direction. And so F12, that we have that right there, so it would be a minus 90 newtons in the x direction, plus F13 would be a 43.2 newtons in the x direction, which is equal to the difference would be, let's see, 46.8, so that would be minus 46.8 uh, newtons in the x direction. So that would be the force on Q1 due to the presence of Q2 and Q3. So we have 90 minus 90, and we have a plus 43.2, and uh, let's see here. Uh, 40, that's 46, that's, yep, that looks about right. All right, the force on Q2 is equal to, so here we see that both of the forces are to the right, so we have F21 uh, or 1, 2 in the x direction, plus the magnitude F23, that should be a 3 there, uh, and that also in the x direction, which is equal to F12, 90 newtons, in the x direction, plus F23, that's 67.5 newtons in the x direction, which is equal to 157.5 newtons in the x direction. So that would be the force on the middle charge due to the presence of the two outside charges. Now the force on Q3 is equal to, notice both of them are in the negative direction, so we have uh, negative F32 in the x direction and minus F31 and that would be in the x direction. So the magnitude of F32, that's 67.5 newtons, so minus 67.5 newtons in the x direction, and minus F31, which is 43, 43.2 newtons in the x direction, which is equal to, that's 100, that's 110, 110.7, so minus 110, whoop, 110, point seven newtons in the x direction. I lost track there for a moment, but there you go. That's how you find the forces on any one of the three charges due to the presence of the other two. First, find the magnitudes of all of them. Well, actually, first, draw the vector so you can visually see how the forces are acting on each of the charges, then find the magnitudes of each of the forces, and then do the vector addition. And that's how we do that.